right now. Everything's been sanded down, all nice and good. Um, so it's time to put up my hair again. So it's out of the way. Now, as I said prior, I like using Mastin's because by far, or Mastin spray cans, because they've so far given me the best results. Very easy to use, and they have the fan and everything, and it's just, they're just very nice paints. However, Mastin's did not have the right shade of green that I want for this particular guitar. So now I'm having to move on to Motip Deco spray pen. Um, I don't know how it's gonna fare. Um, I've never used it before. It has a nozzle that I do not like. Um, but I guess it's all a matter of... Well, I guess it's just a learning experience. So we'll see how this goes on. Hopefully it goes on without any any uh, problems and issues. So, let's have a look. I do not like this spray at all. Um, it pumps out a lot of paint at once and just as a sort of, I don't know. It's not a fan, which makes it extremely hard to control because I can't do the paths that I would usually do because it just kind of throws the paint at the guitar. So I have to do a kind of graffiti artist type thing to it. So I need to figure out, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be able to get this into a nice solid layer, but it's gonna take some doing, which is annoying. Um, it's, it's annoying when things don't work out to be as easy, easy as you'd want them to be. But this is how we learn. The color is exactly the color I wanted, which is the main part of this entire thing. It's just gonna take a little bit of work for me to get the results I want, but you'll be here to watch um, with me as, uh, as it all happens. So yeah, let's see how this goes. Again, I'm gonna keep on saying this over and over. I really don't like that spray. And the thing that I'm kind of fearing right now 
I don't know how it's reacting to the primer layer. It shouldn't, but I don't know. It looks strange. So uh, I'm gonna leave it at two layers for now and see what it looks like. Uh, I'm not gonna risk putting on any extra uh, just in case of it. <sighs> Doesn't work out. This sucks, this sucks. It's, it's, it's just one of those things. Now, something else that you can do at this point when you're about to scuff sand paint is forego the wet and dry sandpaper and use this lovely invention. So this is the Merca Marlon Total. It is sort of like a scotch pad or like, um, what you call it? A Brillo pad, I think is what people call these things. And uh, essentially, they come in a few different grits. This is the fine, which they say is an equivalent to about uh, 1500 grit wet and dry paper. And you just cut a chunk of it out and use it pretty much like you would use sandpaper. I can do little circles, I can just go along the grain. And it's very good for achieving a scuffed up finish in between paint layers. It's essentially what it is made for. Um, the thing that it does not work well as is when you try to flat sand. Because it is fairly thick and it is soft, it will follow the curves and everything, so you're not gonna get a flat finish. But because right now I'm prepping to do another layer of green, this is really, really good to actually scuff sand. So. Why not show you exactly what you can do with this as well. So I'm just going to keep on doing the circles because it's an, that's, the, that's, the, that's the thing that I'm used to doing for this process. And uh, you can use a block as well. It's no issue. And be careful about edges once again because you don't want to go through. Now, during painting, I said that I really don't like this paint. It's mostly just for the nozzle. I'm really surprised at how the paint settled in. It sort of smoothed itself out. Um, and almost has a sort of lacquer feel to it. If I understood correctly, looking at like the product information and whatnot, it's colored lacquer, or that's what they advertise it as. And uh, also, if you have dust particles and little bits of paint or something, you can just use a fresh scalpel blade to kind of pop those out. Because if you keep on sanding in that area, you're bound to just go straight through. Which would not be ideal. So using a sharp scalpel, to dig those pieces out, it's much easier. So yeah. Essentially, this is now scuffing up the paint to give a nice surface for the next layer of paint to uh, grab onto. I'm trying not to apply too much pressure, basically letting the pad itself do the majority of the work. Also because I don't want to really go through all that much. Um, having hard lines like that um, is an issue when you're lacquering. So if you can, try and round over any sharp edges because during sanding you will, 99% of the time you will break that edge unless you're really, really 
really careful. Right now, this was the first initial layers of color. So I am not that worried knowing that, knowing how thick the finish goes on. And the good thing about this is because it's a sort of mesh, it doesn't get clogged up the same way that sandpaper does. The thing to keep in mind about painting in general is that the best finishes are usually thanks to extremely good prep work. So if you do your scuff sanding and your prep work well, that will show in your next layer of paint. It'll go on a lot smoother and more even and it'll look a hell of a lot nicer. Interesting thing to note about this paint as well. Sanding it back reveals a much brighter color. Um, so we'll see what that entails later on, later on when we do the final sanding of the paint. I don't mind because actually this color is a lot uh, closer to what I'm trying to go for than the darker color here. And here I just need to be careful that I don't break the masking tape. And also during my next layer of paint, I really do need to make sure that I get rid of that white line. Because when I remove the tape, all the green parts will have white outlines, which is something that I do not want at all. But by the looks of it, I only need one more session of green paint and then that's the green done and I can move on to remove the tape and start working on detail work with the paints and then finally lacquer. It's really funny in a way where if you follow the IP Instagram page You've already seen what this guitar ends up looking like. So you at least know what the result of all this work will be. If you haven't checked out the IP Instagram page, I'll put a link down here somewhere so you can go. Well, there's a link in the description, but I'll just write it down here so you can go and check it out. I'm going to do the sides in a bit because that doesn't differ at all from the rest of the work. But I'm just quickly going to show you how I'm going to approach the neck. Now with the neck, I don't want to press in on with my fingertips or anything like that. You shouldn't in the first place. But I'm going to be using basically the flats of my fingers to follow the shape of the neck. Actually, because I'm scope sanding with Merlon, I might as well do this. You should really like this color that's coming out underneath. Sort of a bit more of a neon and yellowy looking surface. A lot closer to the actual Achievement Hunter color, which is sweet. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to get the color right. I'm glad that I... Well, I was going to take credit for finding this color, but I didn't actually find this color. So credit to Jay for finding this color in the store. It's one of those things where I don't like the practical, practical version or practical application of the paint, but the paint itself it is really nice, I have to admit. The finish is good, the application just could be better. 
And I know that you can get different nozzles for spray paints from stores that sell supplies for graffiti artists and stuff like that. I just don't have a supplier near me. So that is why I didn't do that. So everything is apart from the sides. I'll do that in a bit. So things have now been scuff sanded and now I just need to get rid of all the excess dust. So I'm going to wipe down all the excess dust and move on to the next layer of paint. was far from ideal. Um, the wind picked up at the worst possible time, which means that I could not paint as accurately as I would have wanted. Looks like there's a couple of runs. Um, hopefully that won't turn out to be anything. The neck turned out fine. I have no issues with that, but the body is giving me a lot of issues right now. So I hope that with the next layer, I'll be able to fix that. Okay, so I managed to remedy quite a bit of that, which is really good. Um, there wasn't quite as much strip as I thought there would be. The paint kind of evened itself out oh, over the course of the half an hour in between, session, uh, in between layers, which is good. Um, I just hope that it really isn't as bad as I think it is when everything is done. I really hope so. Um, looks somewhat promising now, so let's hope for the best.
I did not do full <laughs> I did not do a full layer of paint. This was just because I just looked over the finish that I have now and it is fairly okay for me to move on to the next phase. Um, I didn't want to go and ruin that just because of the type of lacquer and spray that I'm using. <clears throat> I didn't want to risk it. So I'm gonna see what it's like when it cures and go from there. Uh, what I did do was do a little bit of patchwork just so I can finally get rid of all the last of the very fine white corners and uh, hopefully get rid of all that stuff and even out the green as it were. Um, but I'm hopeful this should still work out pretty well. 